Okay, in this video, we're going to do two more integration by parts examples. And these are a little bit more work than the other ones because they take us for a little bit of a ride. And you'll see what I mean as we go through these. On the top right, I have the formula, if you've forgotten it. The integral of u times dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v times du. So well, let's start this problem. Now again, what we need to do beginning of any of these problems is we need to find a u and we need to pick a dv and those will give us information about v and du. So pick dv, I want something that's easy to integrate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick e to the x times dx for my dv. Typically the exponential is a good function to work with for dv. Uh, and then u will just be the remainder. So this will be a sine x. That's what's left over. Okay, so to get du, we need to take the derivative of sine x, and this is equal to cosine x dx. And to get v, we need to take the antiderivative of dv, so this will just be e to the x. Okay, and now we can do a substitution. So uh, let's do our substitution on this function. So we know that the integral of e to the x sine x dx is going to be equal to u times v, so that is sine x times e to the x. I like to put the e to the x out front. And then we're going to subtract the integral of v times du. So that's e to the x times cosine x dx. Now what you probably noticed here is that with uh, e to the x cosine x, it hasn't gotten any easier. Really, we've just changed the integral from e to the x sine x into e to the x cosine x. So we're going to have to do this step yet again. So we're going to make very similar substitutions as we did before. Uh, this time I'm going to use colors in yellow to show that this is a separate substitution, but essentially we want the same information here. So you can label these as something else. Maybe for the sake of clarity, I will label these as like one. So. Uh, u1, v1, du1, dv1, just to show that they're separate from the initial substitutions. Okay, so I'm gonna pick the same thing as I did before. For dv, I wanna pick something easy to integrate, so I'm gonna pick e to the x dx. And I'm just going to show here, this is what we're doing substitutions on. And then for u, I'm gonna pick everything left over. So this will be our cosine x. So to get the derivative of cosine x, we're gonna get uh, negative sine x dx. And for the antiderivative of e to the x dx, we're going to get e to the x. Okay, so now let's rewrite this. So now we know that, erase this line to give it space, we know that the integral of e to the x cosine x dx is going to be uv or u1 v1. So that'll be e to the x cosine x minus the integral of v to the 1 times du1. Okay, so that's minus the integral of e to the x times negative sine x dx. Okay, and remember, don't forget the negative sign here or everything just becomes awful. So du is equal to negative sine x. So remember, when we do that substitution, that negative has to come with us. Okay, so... This doesn't look too helpful yet, but there's some good news. Uh, what we can do is we can see, okay, e to the x negative sine x here, and e to the x sine x up here, so we can hopefully do some canceling. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to take the solution for e to the x cosine x dx and substitute it in right here. So to write this all out again, we have the integral of e to the x sine x dx, so this is our original problem, is equal to e to the x sine x minus, and now we have the integral of e to the x cos x dx. So let's take this solution here and substitute it in. So minus e to the x cos x minus the integral of e to the x negative sine x dx. Okay. 
So let's uh, do a couple things to make this a little bit simpler for us. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to subtract each of these independently. So this is going to be e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. Then we're subtracting uh, the negative integral. So what we'll do is we'll end up adding the integral of e to the x times negative sine x dx. Okay. And now what we'll do is I want to take this negative and I want to bring it outside the integral. So that way we have two things that are the integral of e to the x sine x. So we can remove the negative there and change this positive to a negative. And you should be comfortable with this by now, hopefully. Okay. So this is nice because now we have two like terms. We have the integral of e to the x sine x dx over here, and we have the integral of e to the x sine x dx over here. So let's move this to the other side of the equation. So now what we have is 2 times the integral of e to the x sine x dx is equal to e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x. Ah, well this is nice because now if we want to get our solution we just have to divide the entire thing by 2. So if I divide that by 2 and I divide the left side by 2, well, the 2's on the left will cancel. So now we've found that the integral of e to the x sine x dx is just e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x all over 2. Now, this is a challenging and new problem because it doesn't look like you're getting any closer to the correct solution until you've basically already solved the problem you have this first substitution that essentially doesn't really get you anywhere. It just sends you into a loop. So when you're dealing with trigonometric functions, you have to remember that you think about how the derivatives of sines and cosines go. What's the derivative of cosine x? Well, it's negative sine x. The derivative of negative sine x is negative cosine x. The derivative of negative cosine x is positive sine x. So when you take these derivatives, you end up looping. So these strategies can be really good for problems with trig. Now, not all problems with trig, of course, but of course, in a calculus textbook, when you're going through your course, uh, your instructors will usually make it obvious if you're dealing with something like this. Okay, so challenging first problem. Now let's look at a scary second problem. Okay, so now we want to find the integral of sine of ln x dx. Now, we can't really do integration by parts here because we have a function inside a function. So if we were to take a derivative of this, we'd see there's a chain rule going on. And we do have a chain rule here. We need to reverse the chain rule. What I want to do is this ln x, I want to make a substitution to undo the chain rule and make it work with something that we know how to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick uh, t. I'm going to substitute ln x with t. Okay, and now I have to find dt, right? So dt is going to be the derivative 1 over x times dx. Now if I do some substitutions here, I'm going to get x dt is equal to dx, and this really doesn't look good right now. So second method and second strategy up our sleeves. If we're doing a substitution, with ln x, and we have to take its derivative, we could remember our exponential and log rules. And if we remember, we can raise both sides with the exponential. So we can do e to the t is equal to e to the ln x. Now if you remember, the exponential and the natural log cancel each other out. So we're left with e to the t is equal to x. Now if we take the derivative of both sides, what we're going to get is e to the t times dt is equal to 1 times dx. Okay, so this is going to be a lot easier to work with with a substitution. Now, let's look at how we can substitute this back into our problem. So what we're going to do is every single time we see ln x, we're going to replace it with t. So 
We want to find the integral. Well, the sign isn't changing. We still have sine. But instead of ln x, we're going to put t in there. And now instead of, what do we have here? Instead of dx, which is 1 dx, we're going to replace that with e to the t times dt. So this is times e to the t dt. So now we're finding the integral of sine t times e to the t dt. Now, let me just rearrange a couple of the terms in here, because why not? Maybe we'll see something really interesting here. Oh, look at that. Look at that. This is now the integral of e to the t sine t dt. Well, this looks a lot like the problem we literally just did, except now instead of x, we have t. So instead of doing all those substitutions again, we already know what the end result is, right? So uh, if we just copy everything from the previous page, we already know what the integral of e to the t sine t dt is. And that would be e to the t times sine t minus e to the t times cosine t all over 2. And then, of course, we want to add a constant. OK. So we're not done. And we're not done because we have to put our substitutions back in. So we made a substitution earlier. We said ln x is now equal to t. So now every single time we see a t here, we need to replace it with ln x. So let's do that. OK. So e to the t has become e to the e to the ln x times sine of ln x minus e to the ln x times cosine of ln x. And this is going to be all over 2 plus a constant. So this is our solution. But we can make this a little bit nicer because we know e to the ln x is going to cancel out and just become x. So we can replace these two e to the ln x with an x. And now we have the solution to our problem. OK. So again, this last step was after putting our substitutions back in. So these are more difficult problems. And in order to solve these problems, we'll usually have some hints. If you're doing it out of a textbook, a good hint is that they're usually off in their own separate sections, or it'll tell you to use the substitution first. Uh, on an exam, it's a little bit trickier to tell what you have to do. Um, again, if you see a function inside another function, like if you see ln x inside sine, or you see x squared plus 2 inside sine, you have to undo the chain rule first. So we do a substitution to undo the chain rule, and then we'll have to do integration by parts after. Of course, I could write out every single step again, but uh, we just did this step in the first problem, so it would be kind of pointless to do it again. But anyways, if there's any questions, leave them in the comments below. If this video helped, of course, $2 a month for the membership would be amazing, helping free education, helping me out so I can continue to produce these videos. Uh, again, I appreciate all the members so far, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.